Mystic Veil vale is an interesting deck builder with some fascinating mechanics, and I'm excited to introduce it to you here today on Legendary Tactics. Now I'm going to walk you through the tutorial here, and uh, hopefully you get a good sense of of this game. Um, the the initially the initial view that you get seems really overwhelming, but I just want to say, uh, just give it a you know a few minutes here. I'll walk you through it. It's actually it looks busy, and I know the artwork kind of um, adds to that sort of visual confusion. But um, this game is actually pretty straightforward, and I think you'll find it's uh, got some very interesting. Um, aspects to it that are going to be uh, very compelling for uh, the, the kind of person that loves deck builders. So the basic idea is we're a druidic clan attempting to restore cursed lands to their former vitality. And we have a deck of cards that represents uh, parts of the valley that uh, we need to revitalize. We buy advancements that add to, their car add to the cards and uh, make them more powerful. So this, as like most deck builders, you have that idea of, of your deck starts out pretty weak, but you gradually build it up until you're able to do some pretty powerful plays at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the game. So um, every turn, um, the idea is we're just looking to build uh, victory points. Whoever has the most victory points wins, of course. Um, and uh, there's some uh, di various different ways that you can earn those victory points. But let's take a look at the, at the uh, initial setup here. So the screen's divided into three areas. The first at the top is the Veil cards, and these are bought during the game. Uh, they're bought using these spirit uh, tokens here. Um, but basically, they're divided into uh, level one and level two cards. Obviously, level one cards are cheaper, uh, but less effective. The level two cards are uh, more powerful, but more expensive. And uh, you always have four at the beginning of each round. You have four of each um, level. Then in the middle we have our advancements, and the advancements are what you buy uh, to improve your deck. Uh, and uh, the price, the blue dots there that you see, those are mana, uh, is what they call it. So it's the it's the currency of uh, when you buy and sell ad advancements. And uh, the uh, there's different um, prices, but there's also if you look, there's these tabs at the side there, and that's that's where the the I think the, the deck improvement mechanic is so unique here, and I really like it. Um, you can see that there's a, the top, middle, and bottom. And on your cards, you can see the different uh, cards are, are represented with things in the middle or blank or at the bottom. So when you buy cards, they're going to fill one-third of your cards. The most advancements you can fit on a card is three, and they have to be able to match the top, middle, and bottom. So um, I'll explain more about how, uh, how that works in a, in a bit. But... Um, but it's a really neat mechanic. Now, again, the, this, uh, as it says here, you ha this is where you see your current resources, your field, discard pile, on deck card, and purchased veil cards. Uh, that sounds really complicated, but it, it, it isn't that bad. And we'll walk you through it. Okay, so this is your deck, and there's always a card that's going to be flipped up that's your on deck card. And, and uh, that's just important to note the, the terminology right now. Now the field is this uh, this part of the, uh, the the screen, and this is where essentially you you draw your resources from and you draw your your benefits from. Uh, at the end of the turn, the field is basically discarded and then is drawn again from your draw deck, uh, and uh, that's again got a really neat way of doing that. Um, so. You keep drawing cards until, now do you see these red trees here? These are what they call active decay icons. It's a little less inspiring than red trees, but there you go. You keep drawing cards until you expose three active decay icons across your field and your on deck cards. So you see we drew first card, there was one symbol, second, nothing, third, nothing. There was a second symbol in the fourth card and then our on deck card has the third symbol. So that means we stop drawing at that point. So again, part of building your deck is uh, setting things up so you can keep drawing cards. Uh, and the more and more cards you draw, then obviously the more benefit that's going to be to you. Um, the uh, the discard pile is the, is where you the trash can. That's where the cards are are kept after you have discarded them. Um, and uh, the the middle one is the is where you your purchased veil cards. Remember those cards at the top that they're stored separately there. So you've got your field. You've got your veil cards where those are sto stored and your discard pile. 
uh, which is a trash can. Uh, I, th I think I, I kind of disagree with the icon here. I may, I know it may be tough to draw a mystic uh, tra trash can, but uh, anyway, it just looks very uh, uh, pedestrian in terms of its symbol, symbol there. Um, this is uh, the uh, scores, essentially. This is, these are the four factions um, that, are, that are playing. We are the blue faction, which are the wave guards, the water faction, but you can see there's fire, uh, you know, and uh, earth, I, I'm assuming, and you've got the different uh, colors. Uh, so in fact, when you break it down, you've got the Beast Brothers, which are red, the Life Wardens, which are green, and the Dawn Seekers, which are yellow. And those are the, in this case, they're just played by an AI. Uh, for the purpose of the tutorial. Right there, uh, you can see that there are 33 victory points available. So that's what that little stone uh, thing is. They're awarded throughout the game. And if you've played Race for the Galaxy, it's a very similar mechanic where the uh, once there's a pool of victory points. And once those run out, then the game essentially ends. So in this case, when they run out, you continue play until the last player gets their turn and then uh, the game ends. So it's very similar to Race for the Galaxy in that sense. Um, you have the, the victory points uh, counters here. The blue ones are the ones that are scored through the game. Uh, there's also opportunities to uh, buy cards which have these gray victory points. They're ones that are tabulated at the end of the game. So <clears throat> if you look here, it's grayed out a little bit, but if you see the plow here, you can see there's a gray uh, victory point. You can see this for podlings as well. So when you, when you purchase that advancement, then the gray victory point is going to be banked for the end of the game, uh, but you you don't it doesn't score it doesn't use up any of the active victory points uh, that are uh, in this case we start with 33, uh, so they only count at the end of the game. Um, so the blue dots are known as mana, and you add up the mana uh, in your field. Not don't count your on deck cards. So we can count across. We got one, two, three mana available. And those are what we use to buy up to two advancement cards per turn. And the advancements are added to the the the, uh, uh, the cards, as I mentioned. You just have to, you know, look at the tab on the on the left hand side there to know uh, how it can be placed. It's kind of an interesting uh, mechanic or interesting way to kind of organize this. So and make cards more powerful. And you can spread your advancements over many cards, or you can build up a you know single cards to be super powerful and give you a big benefit uh, when they turn up. So <clears throat> the cost again is at the top right. So you can see we've got three mana available. You can see that here. Um, and uh, that is is uh, basically uh, what you use. You spend that to buy the advancements and add them to your cards um, and add them to your deck. Um, the turn is broken into three very quick phases, okay? The planting phase, the harvest phase, and the discard phase. Um, at, on the digital version, you can see at the bottom, it always tells you uh, which phase you're, you're in. Now, this yellow button here is used during the planting phase. There's kind of a push your luck mechanic, which we'll explain in more detail uh, in a minute. Uh, but <clears throat> basically, this is your opportunity to push... Uh, cards further into your field to you know potentially gain more resources but there's a risk to it and uh so for the moment we'll just skip that but that's basically the planting phase is just you have that opportunity to push your luck then with the harvest phase you spend your mana and you spend your spirit symbols to buy veil cards um so uh, for the moment we've got uh three mana so uh, luckily the the app um, automatically highlights the ones that are uh, available for purchase with your current budget uh, which helps a lot in <laughs> speeding up play. Um, so we can afford the Field of Flowers uh, event. There's no cards priced at one. So um, if you have three, that may be an, an instance where you would push your luck if you've got three mana. Um, it's kind of an awkward number uh, in this game. So um, anyway, you also need to have space in your field um, where it can go. So you can see that the tab that is on the Field of Flowers in this case is the top third. Um, luckily in our field right at the moment, any card is eligible. We can use that uh, because they're, all, all of those cards are open. And uh, so when we, when we buy it, we have to make sure that it will go somewhere um, where there's a, a free slot. So in this case, uh, let's just put it here. It doesn't really matter. Um, all the cards are, are usable in this case. And uh, so we don't get any bonus from it when we buy it, but we get a bonus from it uh, later on when, we, when it turns up uh, in our field. 
and uh, so um, when uh, and that's gradually you know again how you gradually improve your your deck you can't save mana turn to turn so you may as well spend uh, all that you can um, and since we can't spend uh, anything else at the moment we're going to uh, basically uh, go to the, move to the discard phase where we discard our cards and then we draw a fresh uh, batch of cards into our field until we get the three or more uh, active decay um, symbols um, on our cards plus our undeck card. I hope this is all making sense. When you see it played through, I think uh, you'll find it's it's straightforward. I'm doing my best to keep it simple. Um, so here we go. We're going to draw some cards, and now uh, our opponents will go. While they're doing that, you can see we have one active decay, two active decay, and then the on deck card has an active decay. So that's why it stopped at that point. And we only would have two mana because there's only two mana to spend on our on our card there. So it's not a great draw in that case. I'm happy that that part of the tutorial is ending so we don't have to play that through. Um, so, uh, and sometimes the uh, you have to be careful because some cards will have that decay symbol uh, in their, uh, on one of their tabs. So uh, you, you can add to your active decay sometimes and you know it's kind of a, a risk when you're buying certain uh, cards so you don't necessarily want to stack uh, those uh, active decay because it can mean that you kind of end uh, end your your uh, uh, draw after only just a couple cards because you've hit the three uh, active decay limit um, so we did it last time. We just didn't. We didn't push our luck. We're going to try and uh, 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 try our luck this time. So we're going to push our cards uh, into the uh, push the on deck card into our field, and then uh, the the next card will be uh, flipped over, and we'll see how we did. And the card that was flipped was a blank card, uh, so that's no problem. We still have three active decay, and we've added another mana to our field, which is great. Um, so you will want to look for these green growth tokens, okay? One of the things that they do, you can see under grassland, you see that symbol there? What's great about those symbols is that they actually cancel out uh, any respective uh, active decay token across your entire field. So they don't have to be on the card specifically. If you have a growth card in your field, it cancels out uh, one of the active decays and that's really really great because it uh, potentially allows you to draw uh, more turns you don't want to draw more active decay cards uh, or cards with active decay symbols on them um, because then that uh, essentially puts you into a spoil uh, uh, position which means you essentially give up your turn you get a bonus uh, mana but that's it uh, so uh, we're just going to demonstrate that we're going to push our luck we're gonna push this blank card onto our into our field. Hey, we got lucky. There's one more mana there. Uh, let's get greedy, and uh, we're going to, uh, you know, get that extra mana onto our fields. So let's push that on there. Oh no! Of, of course, uh, we pushed uh, what a little bit too far. So even though we got the fourth mana, we spoiled. And so you can see the on the on deck uh, card here. There's a, uh, an active decay symbol. So uh, we essentially kind of lose our turn we get a mana there's a mana token on the on the digital version that uh, glows blue it's an extra mana that will uh, be available to spend next turn uh, but that's just our only consolation prize um, otherwise we just discard our cards and uh, start uh, another draw so you have to be careful with that to push your luck sometimes it, it will uh, be a great idea other times you you know you really <laughs> that you want to be cautious so um, so now we got our field of flowers uh, you know on there which is great so we've got uh, more mana to, to spend so we're not going to push our luck this time and again the planning phase is just that decision are you are you going to push your luck or no and if it's no then you move right on to the harvest phase and uh, we're just looking at the cards and the Lifebringer seed looks very intriguing because it has it doesn't provide any mana, but it has a special ability written on it which says cancels all active decay, all the red trees on the same card, and it's ongoing, which means that it just is an ongoing effect. You don't need an, to spend an action uh, to, uh, to to use it. So we've got a couple options here. We're going to draw it onto this one and cancel out that active 
uh, decay. And so it's not going to count anymore to, you know, towards that, uh, that, that, you know, that three uh, active decay limit when you're drawing cards. So essentially it's neutralized that uh, effect. And in fact, you may want to, with that, with that Lifebringer seed, you may actually want to pick cards that have a decay token on them because it's not going to count. And so as part of the strategy uh, there. So I will take a quick, quick glance at our, uh, the discard pile now that there's cards in it. And they have a counter on there, which is, is quite useful. Um, the counter tells you how much decay is present in the discard pile. The left-hand number is the number of uh, the amount of active decay, and the right-hand number is the overall amount that's in in the uh, in the discard pile. So, active decay are the tokens which have not been cancelled by a growth symbol or a decay canceling card ability that we just used. Um, and five is is you know the the grand total. So, you currently have one less active decay than the total. Um, because of the Lifebringer seed that we purchased. Uh, now, it doesn't represent the total decay across your entire uh, deck or even in your field. It's just letting you know what's in the discard pile. So if you are pushing your luck in the planting phase, it's great information uh, to know. Okay, so we'll go back to our uh, our field and our opponents are going to, uh, to go. And uh, that's great. So we, we're not going to push our luck this time. We're going to go to the... Uh, planting phase. Now uh, I'm just going to draw your attention to the Dawn Singer. If you look on the on the tab on the left here, you'll see that there is a spirit uh, symbol, and these are what are used to buy these veil cards at the top. So they're going to be useful to uh, focus on. I can never keep the symbols straight. I just call them by the colors. But uh, but you've got the bear paw, which is the animal spirit, and the leaf, which is the forest spirit, and, and I guess the sun is the sky spirit, and this twirly thing is the wild spirit. So. Um, there's four kind of currencies, and so you're going to want to build those up and build those into your deck so you're, you're able to buy these Veil cards uh, as often as possible. There's lots of victory points there. So, uh, yeah, so as it said there, it grants a, uh, a uh, Sky uh, Spirit token <laughs> or symbol, and uh, they, they, they're used to buy uh, Veil cards. This also has an interesting ability on it, um, which is Harvest. So you can gain one mana for each a guardian token on this card. You can see there's there's one there already. So you can uh, add other advancements which have that symbol on it and that will boost that special ability in the harvest phase. Uh, now, the harvest phase has to actually happen. You can't spoil, but uh, but every time you get those uh, those guardian symbols there, you can build up these really powerful cards with, with lots of uh, abilities uh, on them, which is great. Uh, so it's uh, very useful and powerful. So we're going to buy that Dawn Singer. We're just going to throw it onto this blank card uh, for now. And we're going to end our turn. And uh, we're going to draw again. And uh, we hit the three limit, uh, four cards in. Uh, but we have three mana to work with. And our opponents uh, will take their turn. And we'll just move on to the next uh, tutorial now. Um, so I hope this is beginning to make some, some sense for you and kind of come together. Uh, there really isn't much more to it. So uh, we're going to start at this part just by moving on to the harvest phase. And now we're going to have the opportunity to buy uh, uh, the veil cards using the spirit symbols. Um, you'll notice there's no mana cost. It's all spirit symbols. So the Azure Lake, if you look down in our, it's grayed out, but you look down on our field and we have a, uh, uh, a card uh, here that is called the Wellspring Advancement. And that provides uh, the the uh, the green and the, the brown spirit tokens, which exactly match the price of the Azure Lake. Now you can also look here. This just tallies up the amount of spirit symbols that you, your spirit tokens that you have in your field. So it's, you know, if you're just looking to shorthand it, that's uh, one way to do it. And uh, so we can buy the Azure uh, Lake and that gives during harvest, it, it gives us a mana as it happens. It's a special ability, but there's not ne that's not necessarily the case. Uh, but we're going to buy it anyway, and we're going to throw it down there. So even though it's not part of your deck, you are gradually improving your setup. And uh, so there are some cards that actually improve your overall situation, even though they're not technically part of uh, your deck. And so this is the, the view. Again, we can toggle around and switch between. This is the veil cards we purchased. The top one is our field, and the bottom one is our discard pile, as I said before. And uh, we'll go back to our field view. And uh, 
again, during the, the next phase, the Veil cards are replenished, so you always have four level one uh, cards and four level two to choose from. And uh, so we're gonna complete our turn here. Really, that's just, we've got two mana left to spend. We'll just throw the fertile soil on that part there, and we'll finish our turn. And then we draw up again. And play continues, uh, basically, until these victory points over here are used up. And uh, so the last part of the tutorial is just going to explain that bit. And uh, we're, yeah, we're almost at the, at the end, actually. So <clears throat> as it said, there's 33 in this game because it's a four-player game. This is the available victory points uh, that can be earned through cards. Sometimes cards will, will provide uh, victory points to you when you when you add them as an advancement. Uh, they will every time they turn up in your field you get these these victory points other ones will you know provide these gray ones so uh, so as I, as I said uh, before if once the victory points run out then uh, you play through to the last player's turn and then it's game over and uh, in a two-player game you're gonna have 23 of these victory point uh, victory tokens uh, available in a three-player game you'll have 28 and 33 in a four-player game uh, just so they sc it scales properly. Uh, so uh, let's take a look at the plow. Now the plow, if you look, has a, uh, a blue victory token on it, which means that if you have it on a card, it's going every time it turns up in your field, you get a blue victory point. It also provides a mana, and it also pr provides a, uh, a green spirit symbol. So pretty useful. Um, and it also provides a gray uh, victory uh, point uh, on it. Um, and some, sometimes these ones, like uh, the Veil cards, will generally provide the gray victory points, uh, victory tokens. Now, those are just added to your total at the end of the game. So they, you're basically banking them. Um, and uh, so they don't use up the tokens uh, that are active, like the blue ones. But they get added up and uh, can contribute towards your victory at the end of the game. And I like that mechanic because it means, you know, you can still kind of come from behind if uh, someone uh, someone else is running out the victory point tokens then you can potentially make some savvy purchases to uh, to swing the game in your favor um, so the the current um, totals are listed there just for your reference and uh, basically that is everything you need to know to play mystic veil vale. um, as I said I, I hope uh, I know it took me about a little over 20 minutes to go through everything but I hope this kind of gave you a sense that this game actually is very elegantly put together. It's not hard to learn. There's a, it feels like there's a lot going on right at the beginning, but once you get into it, you'll see it's very straightforward with lots of strategic uh, choices. And if you love deck builders, you're really gonna wanna take a closer look at this one. So I hope this helped you. I hope this gave you uh, some insight on how to play Mystic Veil. Vale. And uh, if you liked it, please like, please subscribe, and uh, take some time to comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Nato with Legendary Tactics, and we'll see you next time.